Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. And since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. It doesn't show signs of stopping, and I bought some corn for popping. The lights are turned way down low. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you'll really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. The fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. When we finally kiss goodnight, how I'll hate going out in the storm. But if you'll really hold me tight, all the way home I'll be warm. Oh, the fire is slowly dying, and my dear, we're still goodbying. But as long as you love me so, let it snow, 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 let it snow. upon a Christmas song Everybody sang along You see the joy on every face And the world it seemed a happier place These songs brought us together Good time memories forever Now I know what they mean And what they've given to me I'd have never believed For the soul, but someone tell me I don't know why no one seems to ride them no more. So the only way to settle the score is to all make way for a new one that keeps the heart of the old one. Make a little bit of festive cheer, and you'll know when Christmas is near. Should be. 
Well, good evening and welcome to Silverdale United Methodist Church. My name is John Weston. I'm the pastor. We're really glad that you're with us tonight for our candlelight service here to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And we're just so thrilled that you're with us. And uh, I'd like to introduce Sissy, who's our you know, music leader tonight. And uh, she wants to greet you. And we're going we're gonna to get this time started together. Well, good evening, everybody. Like you said, my name is Sissy. I am so glad to be here worshiping with you, celebrating the birth of Jesus with you. And those of you at home, welcome. We appreciate everyone who is here. So let's sing, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 2 verses 1 through 7. At that time the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census would be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census, census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for this census. And, became, and because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son, she wrapped him snugly in stripes of cloth, strips of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. Join us in singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. What a glorious night. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if you'd like to stand, you can go ahead and uh, get yourself to stretch a little bit. Uh, we're going to sing these songs in the presence of the Lord tonight.
Shepherds and angels. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Do not be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today, born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those who, whom God is pleased. The reading ends. Amen. Please stand again and join us in singing Away in a Manger. This is the cradle song, which is a little bit different uh, in tune, but it's absolutely beautiful. had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, 
the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. What child is this? Please join us in singing. Stand if you like for those who are able. Tonight, if anybody has, uh, wants to make any kind of an offering, uh, we're taking a, going to be doing a special offering, and we're not going to pass a plate or anything like that. We have a, there's a wooden box over at the corner by the large doors uh, over at the southwest corner, um, northeast corner of the room. And you can put a, a, any kind of a donation in there. Everything tonight is, gonna, is specially marked for people in need. We have a special fund. It's called the Pastor's Discretionary Fund. It's, it's not a slush fund for, you know, hot tubs or weekends away. It's for helping people that sometimes have needs that are a little bit outside the box and are significant. And when those come up, then we try to meet those. So if you want to help people uh, in a time of need who are on the path and they're trying to live faithful, but, you know, we all have challenges, then you can give towards that tonight. Um, if you're with us online, then uh, you can just go to silverdale-umc.org slash give and you can uh, put your donation in there um, but we're glad you're with us and now we're gonna um, now we're gonna sing Anybody feel like taking a deep breath tonight? <laughs> there is so many things happening in the month of December, and there are so many things that happen the week of Christmas. And you know, when this story, it, it never gets old, does it? I mean, how many times have you heard the story about, you know, this young couple, and, and there's these shepherds, and, and, and the baby comes, and these last few weeks, um, we've been 
we've been talking about the Christmas story. and We've been trying to, to look up really close at the characters, the, the major players in the story. These, these significant, these amazing, amazingly normal people who get caught up in extraordinary circumstances and God uses them to bring his son into the world. And we've, we've been talking about living hope and that, that, that's a, a phrase that um, one of Jesus' uh, main disciples, Peter, uh, it's a phrase that, that he coined. Um, so we go back to a letter that he wrote. This is 1 Peter 3-4. through 4. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth, into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, and which never has to be returned. <laughs> Imperishable. You're never going to let it go. And God will never let you go. That's, that's the living hope that we've been talking about. And these stories are incredible. I mean, if you think, that, if it's been a while since you've read through uh, the first couple chapters of Matthew and the first couple chapters of Luke, you know, there's, it's just, you, you can't make this stuff up. There's, there's Zechariah and Elizabeth, you know, the old priest and his wife. They're, they become first-time parents, and they have an angel visitation. God tells them their, their son is going to be, his, his name's going to be John, John the Baptist. He's going to be the greatest prophet uh, since Moses. Like, he's going to be huge. In God's purposes and they're an old couple like they're reti retirement age and they got to raise him you know we look Joseph and Mary this young couple and Mary has this, they both get visits from an angel and this extraordinary birth and they have to they have to keep it a secret because they they unlike the United States of America they live under an oppressive government system King Herod is not interested in messiahs or future kings being born under his watch and he would not hesitate. In fact, he had tries to destroy the Christ child. And so they have to keep it a secret and people don't understand it. It was tough. Joseph and Mary. And then Anna and Simeon. Anna, she's a local prophet, spends a lot of time at the temple. You know, she gets words from God, shares them with people. And, and, and Simeon, he, he's just a guy. They're not, they're not a couple. They both get a word from God. They both find Jesus. They're able to make a beeline to him in a crowd they've never met him before never seen him they're able to find him identify who he is it must have made his parents cry it was just it's powerful and then we last week pastor dave he, he looked at herod king herod who's who's he's supposed to be the king of the jews but he's not interested in the birth of the new king of the jews you got so you got herod on the one side and then you've got the the wise men they're the the, the pagan astrologers you know those godless people the pagan astrologers they risk their lives they risk their reputation they risk their fortunes and they come to bring gifts and to honor the king of the Jews interesting huh I love I love how tangible this living hope is today um, any, any walkers? Anybody like, like walkers, joggers? Anyone like to get out? All right, so some, of you, so some of you walkers and joggers, do a little experiment. Tonight, before bed, or maybe if you wake up, if you're an early riser, even on holidays, get up early in the morning and just go outside. And, and you don't even have to go for a huge walk. Go down your block or down to the end of the street, or at least you stick your head out the door or out the window, and then listen. And you'll hear something really strange. You know what that is? Nothing. Christmas Day, there is no other day on the calendar where more things shut down because people are thinking about, they're celebrating, they're observing, they're, they're gathering things because of the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There's no other day like it. And when, when, you, when you hear that quiet, it's, it's almost like the same quiet. You know when you, get, when you get snow and you haven't had snow in a long time? Like any time it snows here in Kitsap. And you've got an inch or two and it just kind of dampens the sound and everything just feels extra quiet. Well, you get that Christmas, late Christmas Eve and early Christmas morning without the snow. And I don't think we're getting snow tonight, so yeah. It's just stillness. 
And, and it's almost like you can, like, it's not magic. God wants us to take this story in and to think about what happened when his son came in the world. He wants us to drink this in. And his Holy Spirit lets us do that. So this, uh, this, uh, this short message tonight, this is called Shepherds. And these, these, are the, these are the last people that the Gospels feature, Matthew and Luke, um, in, their, in their descriptions of what happens when, when Jesus comes in, is born. And the shepherds, they, they, were not, they were not expecting a miracle that night when they went to work. In fact, I say, I say went to work like they had a commute. They, they were probably staying out in the fields day in and day out. So you ever had a job where they give you room and board? How many people ever worked for room and board? I worked at a camp one time. I got room and board. Imagine having a job where you get room and board except, oh, without the room. That's, that's what the shepherds were doing. And they were just hoping to, to not lose any animals. They were just hoping that... that that they, were, um, that they were going to make it through the night and, and, and be safe. Um, they were probably just hoping to keep their jobs. And then something extraordinary happens. I'm going to read just a little bit, a little section of it um, that uh, Laura read for us. So this is, if you've got a Bible, you can open with me. We'll, ha we'll have it on the screen. Here we go. Um, this is Luke chapter 2. Uh, I'm going to read, start reading again at verse 9. Suddenly... An angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. <laughs> they were, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by the sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, and lying in a manger. The shepherds were scared. They, uh, uh, the New Living Translation, I think they do a pretty good job. They were terrified. Quaking in their boots, white as sheets, ready to run away. They, uh, they were overwhelmed. And, and they felt this way, I believe, for a lot of reasons. You know, I, first of all, I, I think at least they, they felt like they didn't fit in. It, it would be kind of like, um, imagine you're in your grubbiest clothes ever, you're working in your yard, or, or maybe, if you're, maybe you work at a shop or something and you're just covered and then suddenly, uh, you know, a presidential uh, motorcade shows up and everybody gets out in suits and the President of the United States comes to you in a suit and wants to talk to you on a national television and there you are. It would be that kind of awkwardness because these a the angels, they're creatures of light and they radiate the glory of God. And, and the shepherds, they're feeling very out of place. Why are you talking to us? What is this all about? They were scared they didn't fit in. They probably felt that quite a bit at town. People didn't, these, these were just hard, were, were guys that were just trying to get one day after another, get through the day, get through their work, and, and trying to, they were scared because they thought that God was going to reject them. The law of Moses talked a lot about the holiness of God, which is very real and very significant. And the message was, you have to be holy to be in the presence of God. And if you come into the presence of God at the wrong time, something bad can happen. God is, God is like a blinding light. It's like, the, it's like, it's like a, and we're like little bugs trying to fly up and touch the sun. It, it's just, you can't just go, go up to God or God's representatives. It, you don't do that. And, and yet, here they are, and they're surrounded by, by these angels. They thought that God was going to reject them. And the shepherds were afraid that they were in physical danger. They, they thought, I mean, probably the overwhelming thought that they had at that moment was, we're in the presence of God, it's all real, and now we're going to die. <sighs> Those are the things they were afraid of. You know what it's like to be afraid. You ever had thoughts about what it would be like if you were had to, to face God and talk to him and talk about your life? And, and that's, that's quite a... And yet, none of those fears happened. 
You see that? Like, none of that happened. You know, the angels, they, they weren't a celestial seal team, you know, dropping into the Bethlehem area set to, to clear the area of any hostiles so that the, the infant son of God could come safely into a barn laid in a trough so that they could get things started. Instead, the angels, they addressed them, these shepherds, these guys that felt like we are nothing special. We are, there is nothing about us. We don't even belong here. Why are you talking to us? They address them and they share this wonderful news. And then, concert, music, singing, who knows what else. It was, it, I mean, you think about what, you, you think about what we do for the, the most important occasions. You know, Hollywood award shows where there's, there's more video screens than there are people in the audience and, and there's fireworks and there's all those things. That was nothing compared to what these grungy, tired, shocked, hardworking shepherds saw that night. It's nothing. What they saw changed their lives. It filled them with living hope. Did they know everything about Jesus? Everything that he was going to do? No, but they knew one thing. God showed up to them at work that night and after and they were so impacted by this they went out and they shared it with everybody in town regardless of who it was what whether the relationship they just some things you just got to share this is something that changed the rest of their lives this is how this is how Jesus is our living hope. You see, Jesus, he finds us when we're lost and alone. Th these shepherds, now, now one thing about their vocation, their employment, despite how it just, it was the job that nobody wanted, but there were significant heroes of the faith who had come before them who had also been shepherds. You know, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, King David, the most famous king of Israel who was born a nobody in a, in a nothing family and then God raises him up to be king and he's, he's so blessed, so anointed, so good at it that it changes the course of history for his people forever. Changes the walk of the people of faith. That's incredible. And then this baby that they're meeting, that they're getting to see up close and to be able to touch and to, and, and to know this baby is going to grow up and he's going to describe himself as being the good shepherd because he finds his people. He finds us when we're, when we're lost and alone. Some of you tonight are feeling lost. Some of us are feeling lost. We don't know. You don't know where your life's going. You don't, it's just, you're just trying to hold it together. And you got all these different pieces and it seems like they don't fit. And I want you to know tonight, God knows what you're struggling with. He knows how. And he, he, wants, to, he, wants, to, he wants you to be found. And he wants to take those pieces and put them together the way they're supposed to be. And I know, I know that there are some of you who are feeling very alone tonight. For some of you, this is your first Christmas without your spouse. And it's all different. And inside, it just feels wrong and it feels off. And even though you've got loved ones, you've got family and, and places to be, and you just you feel alone. And Jesus promises to find us when we're feeling alone. Jesus shows us how to live and to die. You see, by the time the shepherds, they found Joseph and Mary, they were, they were starting to remember everything that they had learned about faith and, and growing up and learning about Torah. That was the, the Bible that had been written up to that point, the Old Testament, some of us call it. And 
And they, they wanted to be the best men they could be after they saw what they saw that night. Jesus, he shows us how to live. He, he gives us an, a moral compass and he, he, the, the Bible shows us what true north is. And when, when, you, when you come to faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit will come and live in you and will give you a bearing and help you to orient and will whisper to you and warn you about what's right and what's wrong. You'll just, you just, you just know, like, like in the pit of your stomach. Undeniable. It keeps us running straight. And not only that, Jesus shows us how to die. All of us. We all live in a, li the, a world that is, is wonderful and beautiful and big and difficult and full of hardship and, and things that don't turn out the way that we think they are and it's, it, we get hurt and, and sometimes there are breaks in relationships and there's all these things we have to navigate through and, and Jesus says that he will, he will take us through it and there is something more, something on the other side. There is more than this life. There's more. The shepherds got, got a peak they got a taste of heaven that night, standing out in the field, looking after their animals, just trying to do their jobs, trying to keep their jobs. And they saw the glory of God. They saw the future. And Jesus makes us whole. A big part of his ministry, when he would travel around and teach, he was a wonderful teacher, fantastic speaker. People loved him. He connected, he wasn't real awkward and, 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 and stuffy, uh, but he, he knew his material, he knew the Bible, and he preached with authority like nobody else. It was, but more than that, everywhere he went, he would help people. He would heal people. He would heal people of, 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 of spiritual and emotional and physical wounds and ail ailments and th those and the body of Jesus Christ is still doing some of those things today helping people sometimes with normal practical means sometimes when God just steps in and somebody prays and it's the miracle he makes us whole and these shepherds the, the wholeness that they were experiencing, you can see what it was. Because scholars tell us that, that they, these were not the popular people. They, weren't, they, weren't, they were never going to be rich. They were never going to be famous. They were ne never going to have a great job. They were always going to struggle to make ends meet. And people kind of kept their distance from, you know, it's like, okay, well, that's all nice and everything. If, if they weren't part of the family that was the landowners or anything, if they were just doing it because they needed a job. And... These shepherds, they go out and they start talking to the people in their town. They start re-engaging and talking to their neighbors again. And it doesn't matter that they're just farmhands. They've got a story to share that people might have been skeptical, but nobody could deny their sincerity. And everybody that would have talked to them that night knew something, something happened in the fields. Something happened. And people were starting to think a little bit more cl clearly about what God might do. Looking for the promised one, the Messiah, the, the one that had been foretold who was going to come and was going to make it right, was going to help us, was going to make us whole. So if God is nudging your heart tonight, I want you to be bold and I want you to act on it. And here's how, here's how you can do it. There's, there's several different ways. If God is, if, if God's speaking to you, maybe there's a gift you're supposed to give, maybe there's some kind of service thing you're supposed to do, people you're supposed to help. You know, like, for example, things that we do around here at Silverdale United Methodist Church, we, um, we, have, we have a severe weather shelter, part of the, Kit, the Kitsap County system, and that shelter is going to be activating tomorrow night so that people who don't have a place to sleep are going to be able to sleep safely when it's because it's about to get really cold and we're getting a little snow and there's all kinds of weather coming ahead 
So maybe God's calling you to, to, to look that up and to say, hey, how can I get trained up to be a part of that team so that more people can spread that work around? You know, or maybe Hallow Grounds Cafe. We, we, we have a, a dedicated cruise that put out a hot meal every Tuesday afternoon right out here. Take out. For anybody, that, for no, no charge. For anybody, for everybody. And a lot of people who have nothing come and they get to enjoy that. We have a clothing bank. We have, or maybe, you, maybe, you're, maybe you're away from your home church tonight. Maybe your home church has, has a certain ministry, something you've really been thinking about. So I want you to, I want you to jot that down. And, and if God is, is like just, you're not really sure, you just you need, maybe you need to talk to someone about it, then here's what you can do. And this is, goes for all of you that are with us online tonight. You can text. We have a, a text messaging system for the church. Just text the word here. H E R E to area code 360 844 3011. And we will we'll follow up. Now, we're not going to be getting in your business and be like, oh, well, you need to come to our church and take a membership class and, uh, oh, and you need to give 100 bucks. We're not going to do that. <laughs> if you want to talk to me, if you want to talk to Pastor Dave Snapper, where are you? Let's see. Oh, he's around here somewhere. Okay. If you want to talk to a pastor, there we go. If you want to talk to me or Pastor Dave, we will give you a follow-up call. If, you, if there's something really intense going on, we'll even give you a follow-up call tonight. If you want to just, maybe it's not that critical, but you still feel like you just need to, let's, let's see the hands of our prayer team. Let's see, our prayer team members. All the people whose hands are up right now are, have been trained, and they can pray with you. It doesn't have to be a big, like, drama or anything. They can listen to you confidently and quietly and safely, and whatever it is, maybe you've got someone that you really want to pray for that's sick, or you're worried about, uh, or maybe, or maybe, maybe you're ready to finally say, you know, I, I've been putting this off for long. I know God wants me to start getting involved in church again. I need, there's something more I'm supposed to be doing. I want God to be in here. If you want to make that kind of a commitment tonight and ask the Holy Spirit to come, they'll pray with you. And, and the Holy Spirit will come. And things will be different. And we can help you figure out some next steps or maybe you've got a home church you haven't been to in years and you need to get back, then you need to get back to your home church. God wants nothing more tonight than for his family to be bigger. Because when, when you have faith in Jesus, he, he did more than die for our sins. He, he did more than dying to forgive us so that we can go to heaven and not get in the way. When you come to faith in Jesus, God gives you, it embraces you, gives you a huge hug, and he brings you in and your family. You're not a worker, you're not an employee, you're not a shepherd, you're not a, a pastor or any. Your family. And you, because you matter, you're made in God's image. And he wants you to come home. So we got, we got prayer team you can, we, can, we can talk to afterwards. Pastor Dave and I are available. You can text us and we can follow up. But if God's not gonna, and I know it's busy and we've got, we got family. There's so many wonderful things happening at Christmas. We're not trying to like, you know, hijack your evening. We want we just want God to, to make this all that it's supposed to be. He wants to give you a Christmas present <laughs> that will sustain you forever, that will last forever. You'll never want to return it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Christmas story. We thank you that it's true. And we thank you that you were willing to let Jesus come into our world and go through all the kinds of things that we all have to go through. And we're so glad that he stayed the course and that he died and that he rose again and that he will let any one of us in. All we have to do is say yes and I'm sorry and, and, and what do you want to do next in my life, God? And you're right there. We thank you for that today. We thank you for the, the, our loved ones. We thank you for never leaving us alone. 
We thank you for Christmas. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As this service is concluding, we're going to sing a song that I bet we all know. And as we do that, let's see. We're going to just spend the, um, the rest of our evening in candlelight. Um, so if you've got your candles, um, then uh, what you'll be doing is we'll be lighting each other. Please watch out for people's, for long hair and for all those things. I know you've all used candles before. And if you, if you don't have a candle, uh, please raise your hand and uh, our hospitality team will, uh, will find you and make sure that everybody's got a candle. And then at the end, we're gonna, you can go ahead and we'll blow them out and you can, um, you can leave them in our, uh, in our box. And I think that's that'll be in the basket right there as you head out the door. Okay. going to go up and down the middle aisle and I'm just going to ask you to just pass it all the way down and uh, we'll just try to keep appropriate distance but we're just glad to be together tonight huh